whenever I was learning DSA, I used to keep an eye on patterns that let's say if I have solved a couple of problems which were very similar, I used to see what all more similar type of problems I can solve. System design interviews are more about discussion. There is no right or wrong answer. It's more about the approach that you propose and the trade-offs that you understand and explain. Now, whenever like I actually used to sit in any system design interview, I used to keep kind of like a framework in my mind. Okay, what's that framework? Let me talk about that. In a system design interview, there is a highly likely chance interviewer is going to come back to you and tell you that, okay, probably this is not a good way. Maybe you can think something related to something extra. So have a practical approach while you are preparing and when you are in an interview, try to focus on data modeling because it's an important aspect of most of the systems that you are going to see. Hello everyone, I'm Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, recently I gave a lot of system design interviews and a lot of people were actually asking me that how I actually approached a system design interview, how I was able to clear a couple of interviews which were involved a lot of discussion around some really interesting systems. In these system design interviews, I was asked both the high level design as well as the low level design. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about that what was my strategy to actually approach these interviews, how I majorly prepared for it and whenever a question asked, how I actually approached the problem. This video can help you to get the idea of what kind of a temperament and what kind of an approach you should keep when you are actually giving a system design interview. So without any further delay, let's just start. So guys, when you are actually preparing for system design interviews, it's nowhere, I believe, different than preparing for a DSA interview. Like nowadays, a lot of people just uh, learn DSA based on X number of problems, but my approach has never been that. Whenever I was learning DSA, I used to keep an eye on patterns that let's say if I have solved a couple of problems which were very similar, I used to see what all more similar type of problems I can solve. For example, a two pointer approach where both the pointers are going from the same end of the array. Then I used to see what are the other set of problems where you might have to do the same kind of a two pointer approach. A similar kind of an approach I keep in a system design interview. I do not feel that every system is like absolutely like 100% end to end different. I believe a lot of systems have a lot of things in common. For example, let me give you an example. If you see a system like Uber Ola, like cab services, or you see a system like Tinder, which is kind of like nearby friend service. In both of these cases, you are heavily going to be interacting with let's say some kind of a geolocation databases in fact in let's say food delivery part where you allocate a delivery uh, associate and they pick up uh, the food from the restaurant and deliver it to your home in this also you are going to have some kind of an interaction with geolocation databases why because in all of these three services you are somehow somewhat kind of like having a search query on nearby locations right so, and you have to handle geospatial indexing and everything so Instead of considering Uber, Tinder and like Swiggy's delivery platform altogether, like three different services altogether, I try to map them together that, okay, the core crux of the problem is that you have to actually search for nearby available people based on their location. 99% of the time, their location will be very constantly updated because the drivers and uh, let's say the delivery associates or the people are constantly moving. So their locations will be updated and based on their latest live location, we are going to kind of like query a certain radius, uh, let's say a five kilometer radius or a 10 kilometer radius, something like that. And what are the solutions that we can actually use for it? So I have a similar approach for system design as well, that I try to map similar systems together. I try to see what is the common pattern across multiple systems that we can keep Keep, a, keep an eye on right so this is something that actually helped DM, helped me a lot right you can try to actually read a lot of problems and then you will realize that okay there is some sense of similarity between two problems in in this way if in case a brand new problems like end-to-end -end brand new problems comes up you will be having kind of like a framework in your mind that okay a, some part of this problem similarly i solved earlier maybe we can use that and system design interviews are more about discussion there is no right or wrong answer it's more about the approach that you propose and the trade-offs that you understand and explain that's more that is important in system design so this is something that is the first point i would like you guys to keep in mind now the second important thing around preparation of system design interview is that I try to make sure that I read good articles on the internet because a lot of people who have worked in similar domains or maybe the companies engineering blogs who have actually developed some really interesting things actually post a lot of things all together. So reading these articles actually make you feel that okay you actually have read about some really interesting problem solving approach that some people actually took. But apart from just reading articles I also try to make sure that whenever I'm learning something I try to see kind of like some sense of hands-on. For example a lot of people when they are learning system design they understand that okay what is a load balancer how exactly let's say where should be a load balancer placed when do you need a load balancer and so on 
but i believe learning gets enhanced uh, like i would say exponentially at any point of time if you try to set up a load balancer yourself like have a small project try to get your hands dirty make a small let's say python service and set up horizontal scaling on that and try to set up uh, i would say load balancer maybe this load balancer you can try to set up and to end yourself maybe you can use something like nginx and see how you can set up a load balancer using nginx or maybe you can use aws services or azure services like in aws you have elastic load balancer you can use a load balancer there and get things done so actually trying to practically approach something gives you a better idea because once you practically implement something you get a bro broader wider and a clearer picture and that thing stays in your head you don't have to like rote learn everything that okay this is what a load balancer is this is the use case you will actually see okay this is why we need a load balancer here right so try to approach the problems in a more holistic and a more i would say application driven way this will make your learning interesting as well it will not make you feel that okay you are learning system design just because you want to crack the interviews it will help you to overall develop yourself as a better engineer itself this is also one important tip that i used to keep in my mind while i was actually preparing for my interviews now whenever like i actually used to sit in any system design interview i used to keep kind of like a framework in my mind okay what's that framework let me talk about that so any system design question that you actually see that can be a full stack oriented system design or a front end oriented system design or a back end system design anywhere you can use this kind of a framework so first thing is you have to technically approach for the requirement you need to understand what is expected out of you in those one or one and a half hour you do not want to over deliver you do not want to under deliver because it's a very constrained time it's a whole discussion scenario so you do not want to be in a situation where you are going out of the way when it was not even required so you need to make sure that your requirement analysis is done properly understand the functional and non functional requirements see what is expected specifically because if somebody says design uber in uber there are a lot of things there is uber wallet there is uber booking there is like uh, i would say reserving rides on uber uber does a lot of things there is uber eats uber does a lot of things you need to make sure that your functional requirement that which specific feature you want to focus on and the non functional requirement that what is the i would say system expectations from us is first of all clear if you make sure that in the first 5 to 7 minutes you clear all the expectation your remaining 50 odd minutes are going to be super easy super comfortable altogether now once your requirement analysis is done you should try to approach to a architecture design or a high level design at least to make sure that you you make the interviewer understand that you und uh, that you know how exactly the architecture of a particular system should be built based on the functional and non functional requirement in that you can have a couple of iteration you can maybe start with okay let's say if we go with a very basic approach this is how the system should look like you, you can try to tweak up a, a few things and while you are because a lot of people just keep on thinking that okay what i will design instead of that i would say like have a decent approach not like absolute brute force but have a decent approach and start with it speak your thought thoughts out loud because when you speak something in a system design interview there is a highly likely chance interviewer is going to come back to you and tell you that okay probably this is not a good way maybe you can think something re related to something extra right so they give you hints they drop a lot of hints in a system design interview and you just have to catch it that's why think out loud and start preparing your high level design start seeing that okay what all components like bare minimum components at least you can fit and see if you want to go with a microservices ar architecture monolith architecture these kind of uh, decisions you can immediately pick once you have started writing the high level design and everything also make sure that you also start working on the data modeling that okay how exactly the data will be stored what will be the database choices that you would like to pick it's absolutely okay to give a couple of choices of databases with a sense of trade off that okay if we use this database this is the trade off if we use that database this is the trade off for that you need to have some knowledge of databases and it will be again very interesting for you to actually try to do hands on on the database rather than just theoretically knowing that okay what is mongodb rather than that if you can maybe set up mongodb on your system maybe have a simple backend maybe just a to do app also that is interacting with mongodb you will be able to understand okay how things work in mongodb right so have a practical approach while you are preparing and when you are in an interview try to focus on data modeling because it's an important aspect of most of the system that you are going to see once your data modeling is technically done you should also focus on api design and api signatures i always make sure that let's say based on whatever high level system design we actually discussed in case it requires some part of graphql and some part of let's say rpcs and let's say i opted on for grpc then i try to make sure that i write any graphql query that is required if i already know uh, in case you do not know graphql then of course that is out of question but in case you know you should write maybe a simple graphql query that this is how the client is going to fetch the data from us if there are rpc then you can write the rpc methods what are the rpc methods that you expect to expose if you are going for the with the rest api it's even better because then you will get a chance to actually put the urls 
put all the important rest conventions http methods request body response body anything specific type safety that you want to do everything you will be able to explain so this interface of api api interface designing part should also be the next approach after data modeling that you should try to do this is going to give you kind of like a good space to move ahead and now with your requirements done with your at least a structured basic high level design done your data modeling database discussion done and your api done now you should have good you should keep good 15 to 20 minutes to take a deeper dive into something that is the most important aspect of the problem like let's say if you are making a payment wallet the most important aspect of a payment wallet would be to make sure that people are having uh, i would say high consistency you do not want to be in a situation where a uh, payment from one wallet is deducted but it is not credited in the other wallet these kind of scenarios you don't want to be in right so like you you start taking a deeper dive you pick up the most interesting engineering problem in that particular system and start exploring it give your thoughts to the interviewer that okay now let's start picking up this let's start to focus on this particular part and try to see what all solutions come to your mind for this the more articles the more system design problems that you have read the better understanding you will be having at the time of the interview and the better explanations you will be able to give to the interview so this is kind of like a radio framework that i technically follow r stands for requirement analysis a stands for architecture design d stands for data modeling i stands for interface of the api and o stands for optimizations and deep dive this is kind of like a radio framework that you can technically follow and with this at least what happens is that there is a structure in your interview a lot of times most of the people what they face is that in their system design interview there is no structure like they just start they just start it ideally you should have a structure so that you control the interview rather than the interviewer controlling the interview that in increases your chance to put out your thoughts properly it doesn't put you in a lot of pressure and there is a high likely chance that interviewer will be impressed by the overall approach that you have suggested so these were the couple of things that i used to prepare for my uh, i would say system design interview and these were the things that i kept in mind while giving a particular round i hope this video was useful i didn't want to keep it like too long so i hope the overall discussion was useful for you try to implement these in your next system design interview and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below till then take care guys bye bye i am sanket singh signing off